Your ego needs to be checked. Your ego needs to be left at home. You want to learn from someone, you have to lower your ego or not even bring it with you. So let's be real, no one likes a d right? Hi, my name is Jay Chung. Uh, I am a track driver, a drifter, and well, hopefully a rally or dragster as well. What sparked my interest in motorsports is, I think, just like most people, started from young. I started with toys, just like any other kid, I would say, uh, car toys. And then from there, I kind of spent quite a amount of time with my dad watching F1, so the V10 eras, Michael Schumacher, uh, Mika Hakkinen, and so on and so forth. So that sparked uh, my motorsports interest. I actually grew up in East Malaysia in Labuan. To further my studies, I decided to come back to uh, KL, Kuala Lumpur. And the driving in East Malaysia is completely different compared to the West Malaysia, especially in KL, right? So my dad was a bit more concerned about our driving. We're not used to how it's, how it's like driving here, the speeds, the highways. So he encouraged me and my sister to look for a defensive driving course to get more used to it or, you know, to understand the driving in KL. Hi everyone, I'm Robin van Persie, brand ambassador of BK8. It's a safety driving in a sense where it's, you're doing the most of the driving on track. So that was history and yeah, so I started. So that was my first time on track. I was so hooked, I'm like, I need to do more of this. I found a friend who was interested in doing track. So I tagged along. So he told me when is this track day happening. He asked me if I wanted to go. I'm like, yes, for sure. I'll never forget um, when I went out with an instructor sitting next to me. And a lot of people don't understand how hard you need to brake on track. It's totally the opposite of what you do on the road. And then he keeps telling me to unwind the saying and I don't understand it. I can feel that he's going to smack me at any time. I, I, I honestly, it was hard. It was hard for me. I couldn't really understand what was going on. So they broke it down in sessions. So my first, the first session is all like people like me that's never been on track, they went out. So on the session two, is for people like him that's experienced to go out. So then he invited me to join him in the next session. That's when I know, wow, this is how you do it. Because the speed I was going was nothing compared to what he was going. Yeah, but even then, it was still, to me, an experience that I will never forget. So I started my track day, my first track day in a Honda Jazz GD3. When I came here, that was the car that I used it for that defensive driving, safety driving thing. I wouldn't say I have a point where I wanted to move on to the next car. It's just that it was time to change the car. And I was given a choice by my family to pick any car I want. My first choice was actually at that time was a Golf R. So I went to see a Golf R, but I couldn't find one in the showroom. So then I decided, okay, since we are here, might as well go and see them again. The McGain was there, I test driving and I loved it. But I say I needed time to think about it. Because my first choice was still the Golf R. Um, but eventually, I decided on the McGain because I felt that for track, I think it's more suitable because of what it has. What kind of made me want to switch from the McGain to the BRZ was purely because I want to better myself. I felt that to be faster, I need to kind of get over the fear of spinning, oversteer and whatnot. And the only way to do it is to get a rear wheel drive. So hence why I decided to sell them again and then get the BRZ. A lot of people think it's a bit of a, it's a downgrade from a 265 horse to a 160, 170 horsepower car. But to me, that wasn't the goal. The goal was to learn rear wheel drive. The goal was to understand oversteer. The goal was to be a faster driver in, in any platform. I think as a car guy, drifting is pretty cool. Let's be real. A lot of people, non-car non -car person might not, might not think much of it, but as a car person, seeing a car drift is cool. As I started motorsports, I always think that drifting is cool and I always want to do it. And never really thought much about it because at that time also, I think my focus was more on track. It was all about being better, beating lap times, until I met Jan. I would say we started off on the right foot. We started off as friends. That's how I know him. It wasn't, uh, 
Hi, Jan. Um, I'm Jay. Would you like to teach me? And it wasn't like that. But how I met Jan was um, it was a, one of those track days. Stumbled upon the Lotus pit. That was the only pit area available for a car, which is my car. So I went in, parked it there, and Jan was there. At that time, I just upgraded a big brake kit in AP Racing. Jan was a bit intrigued, came over and had a look at the brake kit. And yeah, we had a slight conversation about, about the brake. And then I kind of invited him. I said, why don't you drive my car and see how the brakes feel? Like if you plan to get one, if you plan to upgrade, you can go ahead. I trust you with it, obviously. Another thing about Jan is, if you're willing to learn, he's very willing to teach. I have not seen him when someone approaches him and asks him a question. It's never been like, mm, I'm just going to say this much and you figure it out yourself. It's never really been like that. Where, for example, he enters a corner, let's say for 100 kilometers per hour, I can only do it at 60. So he brings it down to 60. He doesn't go ahead and let me chase after him. Race-wise, I only did one, unfortunately. Uh, it's the MSF Racing Series, um, specifically in the Saga Cup Pro. The best one, I would say, I, I won the championship overall um, in 2017. I started at the end of 2016, the same year that I won the championship as well. Definitely, definitely wish to race full-time. And I think as uh, any motorsports person would tell you the same thing, to get paid to do whatever they love, which for me, it's motorsports. If you call yourself a motorsports or a racer, you have to know how to adapt. It doesn't matter if it's drifting or race track or rally or gymkhana. Your adaptability is very important as a driver. Come on, man, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. When I get a car, the first thing I want to do is just change the exhaust. Every car guy wants to do it too. We all want to hear our car sound amazing, right? But so a lot of people, first thing that they do is power. Power involves air intake, exhaust, and a tube. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I love it too. When it comes to mods, driver mods. And I'm talking about the driver behind the wheel. The, they call it the nut behind the wheel. That is the one that you need to tune. Not any nut in the car, but the nut behind the wheel, right? Getting the basics right, how to brake right for track. I think one of the common mistakes, generally what people do on track is not understanding your car well enough. A lot of people just do the mods and next thing you know, go to track and then this happened, that happens, all hits. Um, I wish I, I was more versatile. I want to do rally, rally cross, drag even. Anything that has wheels on it. Motorbike, sure. If I can if, and if I know I have the means or even I know someone, yeah, I want to do it, definitely. The ultimate goal is to get paid to whatever we enjoy doing. It's not just a race driver. I am actually a part-time instructor as well for events here and there. As a team, we teach not just driving, we teach the technical points as well. And yeah, we do get paid for that. And end of the day, something to do with cars. I enjoy it when teaching or get to even drive, show people how to do it. All right, so aside from motorsports, I also indulge myself in games, sim racing, uh, first-person shooters. And on the day, sim racing, the basic is that the, how, the way you brake in a sim, if you want to do a fast left tire, how to do it properly, it's how you kind of brake on track. You really have to slam on it. It's the same thing. Yeah, so on the FPS, what it does, a lot of people probably like, why does FPS have to do with motorsports? Reaction time. Reaction time is very important with drivers, right? When the light turns green, you have to go. That's one. You have to avoid someone, right? Or the person's next to you, what are you going to do? All these are reaction times. It's very crucial to have fast reaction time. And FPS, because it's a fast-paced thing, again, it helps with reaction time. To say that, has the motorsport scene changed in Malaysia? Definitely. Has it gotten better? Yeah, definitely. But unfortunately, there's still things that can be better. You know, like more tracks. Yeah, you know, we need that. We can't be just relying on Sepang, right? We need more exposure. I think I mentioned this earlier, you know, Sepang will never change, the layout will never change, and everyone can go there and drive 365 days and be better by the end of the day. You're better at one track doesn't make you a good driver. You can go to another track and you don't know what the hell is going on, right? Because you're so used to Sepang. So more tracks help with development of the driver. When you start, you kind of have to 
find out what you really want to do. Do you want to do this for fun? Or do you want to do this to compete, to take it to another level? Because at the end of the day, I feel there's always a fine line between a hobby and a job. That's what they say, right? Which is in some ways the same thing. A hobby and a competition, it's two different things. Your ego needs to be checked. Your ego needs to be left at home. You want to learn from someone, you have to lower your ego or not even bring it with you. So let's be real, no one likes a d right? And if you're being a I won't invite you to whatever sessions I have. That ego, attitude, and your mentality has to be right. My name is Jay Chong, that's my story. Never miss a goal. Watch it on BKA Live TV app right now.